This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. I love Big Riley. Of course you do. Who doesn't? Anyway, welcome back to the Ultimate Spider Cast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, is... Hey, y'all, it's a little tougher. And I know, you can, I know you all have joined the last three weeks of our Acts of Vengeance uh, coverage, but I'm going to round out the mouth, the, the mouth of the month. Uh, probably how we're going to be doing it most, uh, most of the months going forward. A new issue review, well, issues... I think we're going to cover all well, the spider books that came out this week and last week, so. Because we're all about the spider here. Old stuff, new stuff. So. Should we start with last week and work our way to the present, or? Yes, that sounds about right. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. So, what would you like to start with from last week? Oh, uh, surprise me, Philip. It's okay. That's what she said. Um, you want to start with? Really, gotta get back to Wade's world. <laughs> you want to start with Spider-Man Velocity number one? Okay. This mini series, uh, Spider-Man: City at War, which all this is based on the. Uh, PS4 game. Mm-hmm. They keep, like, you know, they keep trying to repurpose. Is uh, now are they going to cancel this because the whole Sony thing or what? Ooh, I don't know. Probably... They're like, we're not going to promote your damn Spider Verse and your damn game. If you know, yeah, but... they really could probably do that. Yeah, they could, but I wonder how. I wonder if this is selling good. Like, uh, I mean, Disney's probably making money off the comics, right? I, I, I mean, I like it. I don't know how well it's doing. I'd have to check Diamond or whatever. Yeah, but I'm just wondering if... I actually never see these in my comic book. I actually specifically have to order these. Like, a lot of the mild stuff, I always end up having to. It, I think it's just my market. Oh, yeah? Because let's... let's um, yeah, 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 I'm in Florida. <laughs> Did you say the mild stuff? Yeah, the Miles Morales stuff. Like, most of the stuff, I, I just... It's not... I mean, I'm trying to think. I think at my store, I think most of the Spider-Man stuff probably sells okay. It's like some of the other, like, um... Spider... Uh, well, Ghost Spider, excuse me. She sells pretty good, though, so uh, it's kind of a weird thing. Yeah, I think most of the Spider stuff sells good at my store. I think it's, like, stuff like, um, maybe Ironheart. What else was the DC? It wasn't selling good. Some of that, some of the other stuff doesn't sell too well. Yeah, so... But now, I... I, I mean, it, while it wasn't really truly needed, I, I still thought it was pretty good story. I had fun with it. I mean, I'm enjoying it, and I haven't even played the game. So, but I, I do I like that they actually give, like, many... Philip, let me tell you, I have a friend that is a hardcore, hardcore Xbox person, right? Mm-hmm. When, when this game came out, and they, they played it at my house, they literally only bought the PS4 for this game, and they're still very happy with their decision. Oh, if I had the money, I would... I'd probably buy. I would buy the PS4 probably just for this game. Christmas is coming up. I'm just saying they'll probably have a pretty good sale oh. at Walmart. <gasps> oh, that's what we should do. Bring the PS4 up when you come up. Actually, I was thinking about bringing my classic PlayStation. Oh, you, you know the little one. I don't know if everybody is like. I, I mean, I'm a '90s kid. I have an affinity for the original PlayStation. Oh, so oh. you know, a little Tekken. I was gonna say we have PlayStation Three up here, so. Or I could bring my um my classic Super NES or my classic NES. We could just hook it up via HDMI and we could do some Mario Brothers, bitches. Hey, we have Nintendo Switch. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. <laughs> oh, well, my sexual. <laughs> I know. I, you know, I'm so mad. Like, I I have a Switch, but like, I don't. I only use it for like co-op games when like my friends are up or whatever, mm-hmm. or down here. Um, cause they don't have Sims 4 on the Switch. If they had Sims 4 on the Switch, I literally wouldn't need any other gaming console. <laughs> just saying, just saying, EA, give the Nintendo people their damn Sims. 
moved on. <laughs> but um, no, nah, I mean, it's I like the artwork the most. I think yeah. is what makes this book really kind of stand out. Oh yeah, Emilio Leso, yeah, yeah, great art. Um, and Swarm. <laughs> I'm not so keen on that that aspect, but it, it, it might grow on me. Is Swarm in the game that you know? Uh, kind of, sort of, but I don't think that it's that exact interpretation. Okay, but this, you know, must have been a comic book adaptation. <laughs> but this, you know, but this suit is in the game. There's like armored suits in the game. Yes, okay. yes. I figured. Oh my god! Like seriously, that's like literally the best part. Unlocking all the new suits. Well, not new suits, but like throwback suits. There are a couple of new suits, but yeah, it's really cool. Nice. So, uh, I mean, yeah, like I said, I love what I love that they actually give Mary Jane something to do is actually being like the bugle reporter. Yeah, yeah, that that was nice. That's what we need to do in the main books. Bring bring the marriage back. Peter can be like a work as a scientist during the day. Mary Jane can be like a reporter or something. I don't know that I want her to be a reporter or even a blogger because Iris on the TV show is basically uh, doing that. Yeah, a lot. Of- There's a lot of like, oh, my girlfriend's a reporter kind of types. You know, maybe it's a little too close to Lois Lane. Um, I don't, I don't know that I want her to be a. She, you know what? She could be an Instagram influencer, like a healthy lifestyle. No, I'm being serious. If they wanted to like update that, because I, I mean, the, the the influencers that I follow, they're not that bad. Like some of them are pretty cool. Like they're motivational speakers, stuff like that. Whatever it is, so she wants to put some good into the world. I'm just saying, call me if you need ideas. I mean, I could see that because I mean, she is like you know an actress, model. I mean, I mean, she could get a big uh, following on Instagram. Exactly. That's a good idea. So, so you're liking the the this uh, the video game comics so far? Oh yeah. Um, I just you know to be honest, I know Swarm's been around for a really long time. I just really hate what his anagram stands for. <laughs> It's an anagram? I thought it was just like called a swarm. I mean, no, it stands for Symbiotic Warfare Anthophilia Restraining Model. I mean, at least in the in the comic book and in the movie, uh, and in the game, that's what it stands for. Yeah. Hmm. So, a Nazi made of bees. A Nazi made of bees. <laughs> that that's what they say. Okay, so jo- uh, Jonah Jameson has a uh, podcast in the video game, mm-hmm. and that's what he calls swarm. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, the cutscene is great on that one. I think I actually have a action figure of Swarm from like the the late nineties. Oh yeah, it's like 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 translucent, plasticky, yellow in color. But like, I think if I remember right, it had like removable stuff and like the snap on B armor. So I'm trying to remember, he might have showed up in the animated series, but I do think he sh- he did show up in the comic. I think like right after the Clone Saga, maybe. Or no, oh. or I know he was. Supposed to be in um, Spider Man Turn Off the Dark, too. Oh, oh no, I think Ben Riley might have faced us, Swarm. I love Big Riley. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I like I said, it, I think it was an interesting updated take on it. I just. Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I know, but there's there's something else going on. I mean, Swarm was basically just, you know, the guy to punch in the face in the beginning of the issue. <laughs> Hey man, every everybody needs a shot their own shocker. Okay, that's right. All right, well, we're we were talking of Mary Jane. Do you want to do Friendly Neighborhood Spider Man number eleven? Sure, let's do it. All right. Um, I love the art. I love this cover, by the oh way. yeah, I, I love the art through the whole thing. I thought the art was beautiful in this issue. They're they're stepping up their game. Mm-hmm. Big Mary Jane issue. <laughs> And you know, I, like I said, I sometimes I find her very annoying, but I haven't found her annoying in this particular rendition yet. Yeah, I know. It's, she's uh, it's basically like Mary Jane versus a troll. Yeah. A whole yeah. pulled over from um, oh, what is it? It's a, <laughs> a whole Asgardian crossover. <laughs> War of the Realms. Yeah, something I just couldn't get into. Just so many crossovers. <laughs> I know and uh, events just like I, I can we go like I just I challenge the, the major comic book retailer uh, the producers to just go one year without like a big event oh. and just see just see if maybe 
maybe there actually is a fatigue for crossover and you know let everybody be in their own little bubble that's for a little I haven't bit. been buying lots of it. I haven't really been buying much of that uh, absolute carnage because I'm just like, oh my lord, already. I'm like, I don't think, I don't think the last one was over before they s- cranked up absolute carnage. Yeah, it wasn't. It never. It's like a never ending cycle now. <laughs> Although I did, I did like what they did with the de- with Deadpool though, because it's like they kind of ended that last series and before the next one starts with Kelly Thompson. That hit that his absolute carnage mini series is right in between. Yeah. So it's not like an extra Deadpool book. You're still just getting like the one Deadpool book a month. <laughs> they couldn't help themselves. But it wasn't, yeah, yeah, it wasn't gratuitous on that front. I know. I know. I mean, like, they are kind of like, um, since Mary Jane is getting her own title, they're kind of like, you know, well, if you like this storyline, you might want to pick up her book. Well, I was going to say, I, I, I wonder if this was purposely planned because, yes, Mary Jane is getting her own ongoing title soon. I definitely think so. Now, are these the same? Who's writing that? Um, I never bothered to look it up. I will because if it's the same people, that would be pretty cool. Oh yeah, that would. Um, if it was the top one, I will look it up now. Uh, trying to remember because I swear it was called something more than just Mary Jane. To, uh, oh, Amazing Mary Jane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it. Is oh September thirtieth uh, issue one uh oh no wait October twenty third that's it uh I was gonna say that close no that's when the orders had to be in because I'm thinking I'm on previous world here oh no it's not the same team it's uh Leah Williams writing it oh oh that that's nice to have a woman on the on the um lead mm-hmm. yeah and the art team looks different yeah oh okay. I think that's just the premise. It's like, hey, let's let's showcase Mary MJ. So you know, maybe this will drum up some um, interest. And I, I definitely think I, I love that she says, "My damsel days are long behind me." Because thank God. Yeah. Oh, I, I think I did hear this. Uh, yeah, that her ongoing series is spinning out of that story from Amazing Spider-Man twenty-five. Oh. Mary Jane Watson just got her big okay. shot at, but at what cost? And can she really trust anyone as she pursues her Hollywood dreams? I'm gonna pretend like I didn't hear that and still give it a shot. I, I know he's not going to pick this up, but Charlie Esther, this is this is like, you know, Patsy Walker. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm. Maybe she even runs into her, and she becomes like, her mentor. This sounds like something Charlie Esther would like. Come on. Because there's just no way they're not going to give Jessica Jones another TV show since it, it did really well. Oh yeah, and well, supposedly I, is a, it's a hot commodity now. So. Or like I was like I was. Saying, you know, I'm sure, you know, some of those characters might show up somewhere else, like, uh, you know, Trish and all that. Yeah, I, if it was, like, all the, like, really cool females just, like, kind of were swinging by, like, she, she sees some of the old West Coast Avengers and stuff like that, I think that would be really cool. Oh, Lord, are we going to get Tiger in an issue of Amazing Mary Jane? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mockingbird. Hey, man. They, they have been trying to find a place for Mockingbird. On TV, in the stories and stuff. So I, I could see that. There you go. Oh, Mary Jane running her own uh, super female superhero group. <laughs> Although they're kind of doing something like that. There's like Cap that America's working with, like some like all women's uh, team. It can't be all women if he's working with them. Though. Well, everyone else is a woman. Exactly. <laughs> so it wouldn't be all women. I know. Um. So yeah. So I'm trying to remember because what you know, Ma- like we said, uh, I don't know if we said Miles Morales makes an appearance in this issue. Does does Mary Jane know Miles's identity, and does he know if she knows? I don't think so. They were talking. I mean, because she was just like, "Oh yeah, I know the spider business." So I was like, "Does Miles know that he- she's with?" Well, well, okay. Does Miles know she's with Peter though? Because the way they exactly the way, it's the like- way it's written, you can't. Talk. Like, when do they know it and how do they know yeah, it? Yeah, you don't know either way from the way this is written. Do they know that we know that they know that we know that they know that they know that we know? Maybe. <laughs> um, But like, oh my god, could you pull on the heartstrings anymore by having her help Aunt May pick out a wig because she's dealing with cancer? Oh yeah. You know, Aunt May's like, which wig should I get? And Mary Jane's like, you're getting all the wigs. <laughs> and like, she scolds the troll. She's like, you're supposed to be sleeping? I was just like, <laughs> trolls don't sleep. Have you never been on the internet? Don't see the troll. Exactly. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, so so as, so as a female comic reader, you, uh, you you like this issue? You did it give you what you need? Um, it gave me a taste, okay. and I hope that they really do work towards expanding on that. I'd I'd love to see MJ really come into her own because Lois Lane is her own thing. But Mary, it's always like Peter and Mary Jane, but Lois Lane is her own thing, and I think I kind of want that for Mary Jane now. It's time. It's 2019, almost 2020. It's- yeah, I said the reporter thinks I want them to like empower her somehow. So if she doesn't become a reporter, yeah, I mean, I like our idea. You know, maybe her like running like a female superhero team or something. Yeah. Perfect. Or just, you know, like finding like, you know, other strong women and like, you know, really finding herself and not having to be defined by Peter. Like, Yeah, because I mean, she has experience running stuff. I mean, she was basically Tony Stark's assistant for a while. And if you, oh, yeah. and if you can wrangle that mess, exactly. All right, so should we move on to the next book? Yeah, let's do. It. All right, what did you think of uh, the final issue of Spider-Man: Life Story? I may or may have not have cried. Not gonna tell. It was really good, and I feel like in twenty years they should redo this. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't got this yet, I'm sure they're going to collect it. I mean, it's probably going to be a cool, like, you know. It's probably a hardcover. Alex Ross might do a cover just for the hell. Like, it's that good. You know what I mean? They're going to milk the crap out of this. Oh, yeah. I mean, right. Great job, Chip. Really, truly, Chip did an amazing job with a very odd premise. Yeah, I could see this being mentioned for years and years to come. And the whole... And I don't know if he read it yet, but like I told Charlie Esser about the mouse twist. I was like, I'm like, you have to read it just for that, Charlie Esser. That is so true. I, yeah, like I said, it was re- they did a really good job with it, and I was just like, I, I like, I thought they were kind of like fizzling out, and then six hits me, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I mean, they, and, they, and they wrapped up with some stuff too, like in a good way, you know, like the whole Craven Venom thing. And- yeah, I, I, like I said, a couple of the liberties that they took, I was like, I, I guess. But then, like I said, this really like drove it home, nailed it, and I was like, okay, I'll trust you next time, Chip. I won't question you anymore. Well, it's like too, it's kind of a different Spider-Man story because unlike you know regular Spider-Man that's always ongoing, this had like a beginning, middle, and end. Exactly. And you kind of had to fit, you know, what uh, over fifty years of story into like six issues. <laughs> he did it pretty well. Not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, just that whole fight inside that uh, in the mind at the towards the end there. Well, let's be honest, Mark Bagley, you know, Bagley, he elevated it a little bit too. Heck, like we can't forget. Him. Heck yeah, especially that two-page fight scene spread. Yes. Oh my god, like the such an interesting choice to put that on like a white background and not like a light blue background makes it really pop and you know, I, great choices, really, truly. Mm-hmm. And I, and I do like Chip's restraint, you know, mentioning Doom, but we don't see Doom at all in the issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was just waiting for it. I was like, oh, I'm not, well done. You didn't even show him, but you mentioned him. Which, you know, if Doom was a real person, he'd be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> How dare he not? Yeah, we can never give Doom the power to break the fourth wall. No. no. <laughs> I'm just, I just, yes, that we can't do that. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know how much we want to spoil about this issue. But yeah, it. it yeah, I don't think we should really, really spoil it. I think you, even if you didn't read the other five, you can still read this issue, and it will take you where you need to be. But yeah, I would definitely recommend reading all six, though. But uh, yeah, I did like the ending. You know, it was a good dream. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I get overall the whole series is an A. I I highly recommend it. Yes, it is an A. Me, Story's well. good, and of course, it's Bagley, my favorite Spider-Man artist. So yeah, of course. And again, like I said, actual Spider-Man story with the beginning, middle, and end. Charlie Esser should read it. All right. Um, I'm, when it comes to trade, remind me. I'll probably get it for him. Oh, nice. All right. Uh, well, the last book I have from last week. I don't know if there's any other Spider books, but uh, Amazing Spider-Man twenty-eight. <sighs> <laughs> What was that about? Um, I don't know. Like, it just... Mm. Are, they, are they dragging some plot points out a little too much? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm already over it. I'm like, we're all... You we know, we just kind of had a, a quote-unquote major shake-up at 25, and it's just like, we're three issues in after that, and, uh... 
Yeah. And I don't understand what we're doing. It's like, aren't Peter and Mary Jane st- back in a committed relationship, but he's still living with Randy Robertson and Boomerang? I'm just saying there's something strange about that. Maybe we should explore in fanfic. I'm sure you yeah. have. Oh, I don't have the time, but if I did, I would. No lies. No lies will be told here. <laughs> Good lord. But I did really enjoy the cover. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like Kingpin almost putting Spider-Man through the wall. A lot of tension. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and like, I'm still not over that he's mayor. Oh, Fisk, yeah. Yeah. Better than King. Boomerang can go suck some toes somewhere. Like, I just... Again, I'm, I was like, we're still doing this gag of him being the roommate 28 issues later. Yeah. And last, last like the first year. And we're like, we're... Somebody never got the, um, the memo. Yeah. And Randy Robertson's dating the female Beetle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like the, the conclusion was a little bit silly. Boy and his fa- boy and his father was upset in the eighties when he when he was married to a white woman. Yeah. But Sinister Six, like ah, uh, like I feel like they could have done Sinister Six a little bit better. Uh, like Sinister Six deserves better. Yeah, the all female Sinister Six. Yeah. I'm like, really? The White Rabbit, Sinister. <laughs> they tried it. I know. At least we got a female awk here, though. True. And I'm really enjoying that, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm thinking they're keeping auto. Oh, part of the reason they're keeping auto spect- uh, superiors. So we have their female awk. Mm. <laughs> I know. You're not feeling the superior. I mean, it's, not for it's not for everybody. Everything isn't for everybody, and that's fine. But damn it, can I get a... That's not Archie. <laughs> hey, I mean, you have your ghost spider and your Miles Morales, and you like Peter Parker. <laughs> just don't like. I do. I just do. don't like Otto. <laughs> just he's wishy washy. I know. I think that's honestly the strongest villains that you know Marvel has are the ones that are just that haven't changed. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't need Doc Ock as an anti, you know, anti hero or trying to be a hero. I didn't like it when Doom did it. <laughs> And, you know, okay. and are we getting the return of Spike? He tried to be anything other than Kingpin. I can appreciate that. Yeah. And are we getting like Spider Man 2099 back? Because I think Marvel's saying something. I mean, he appeared on the last page. Matt Connor's going to have some fun then. Well, I mean, he showed up on the last page of 25, and then I thought Marvel said something about they're doing something with 2099 again. So. You know, I think that. Um, who wrote this? Um, This is. This is still Spencer, yeah. I think he just wants to be goofy. Like, he saw somebody take a, a storyline a little too seriously. He's like, I'm going to go the other way. Because this, this is just really a goofy, goofy story. He's like, well, you people didn't like Hydra Cap, so here. Hypno rings? Really? Well, it's like, I mean, yeah, there are some good serious Spider-Man stories. But I'm like, when you're dealing with it month to month, do you really want to do serious, though? Because he is like a jokey type character. I mean, he's witty and smart, smart alecky. It's not really like goofy, like cartoony goofy. You know what I yeah. mean? They gotta find the balance. Yeah, maybe they're still working that out. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Like I never know what to expect from this book. You know what I mean? Like some stories are super good, and then other times I'm just like, where are we going with this? Why have you been on this so long? You know what you're doing. <laughs> I know. But yeah, I mean, it's still a B minus for me. Um, yeah, I probably, I probably agree with that. Just because, yeah, again, there's some plot points I want them to pick up the pace. So, what are they going to reveal? Like the whole Mysterio thing in Mary Jane, Amazing Mary Jane number one, or what? Probably I, yeah. that's what they're saving it for. <sighs> Too many Spider books, but I might have to check that. Bro, between Spider Man and Batman and Superman, it's like, dude, is there are there any other comic just books? Just between Spider Man and Batman. <laughs> And thank God I gave up on Wolverine a while ago. Well, even he doesn't have uh, too many books. I mean, old uh, like that. Now, well, like like a year and a half ago, it was a I lot. Know. Well, Dead Man Logan wrapping up. Wolverine doesn't have like an ongoing series right now. Thank you, House. Of, thank thank you, House of X and Powers of X. Yeah, that's the one good thing. 
But as soon as that's over, expect a million different oh, books. Six X Men books are coming. Yeah, I mean, then they're gonna be like, okay, how many more can we go until it collapses? Ten, twelve? Oh, All right, you want to jump to this week's books? Yeah, let's do it. Let me hold on and grab my notes. Do 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 for this week. Oh, Marvel Spider. All right. Um, as I said on capes, um, I thought that the Ghost Spider Annual Number One was the best Marvel book. It was this week. Ghost Spider. I just really enjoyed this story. It was really good, and that co- I like, Oh my god, that cover worth the five dollars. I would have even went five ninety nine. <laughs> I like some. I think this is we don't really talk about a lot, and I like that her and Miles are both kind of going through this, where they're trying to like really balance it. Mm-hmm. Lies, but they just they really just can't get it together. But you know, murder world Murder <laughs> for me. I was like, bet. Okay, cool. Like yeah, I told Charlie Esther it's some probably something he would like. <laughs> but no, like you like the cover, like some of the interiors I thought were really great. Oh yeah. Like inter- I think I um, like the interior art. I mean the cover's great, but I think I like the interiors even more than like the cover. How do you How do you feel about her, you know, living in the two different universes? Is that working for you or not? It's weird because it's like, well, I guess, is she just going to school here and still living in the other universe? Yeah, I think that's how they're planning. Well, I just, well, I just said, what was it? The last issue of her on, well, was it, or was it Ghost Spider number one? It just seemed weird because like Peter takes her in and she's like, oh yeah, I'm from another universe, but I'm going to come to school here. I was like, really? You're going to tell like what the dean or whoever that? I'm like, wouldn't you just like try to keep that a secret and just like pretend to be like you know six one six one Stacy's relative or something? I think that's actually going to come into play later. I think that that was just a little um a little seed. I think there's something going on with that particular situation, maybe because you're right, it did seem a little weird. Yeah, it did. Because uh, I, I was like, what? Wouldn't you pretend to be someone from the six one six, especially like you know Gwen Stacy's relative or something? <laughs> But this this issue did have a lot of action too, and I found that very refreshing. Um, because it's like outside of like um Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel, like a lot of the female superheroes, it's not like super punch em up, you know. It's a lot of talking, it's a lot of you know feely crap. Mm-hmm. But no, this one has a lot of action. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we base. I mean, she basically she gets in the murder world pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And I do enjoy the character work. And then also, um, I mean, for the demographic that is aimed at, um, you know, they talk about self care and like, you know, how you do need to take care of yourself and take time for yourself and stuff. I thought that that was a really important message that they were kind of stressing in this issue as well. Oh, yeah. It's kind of sad that it's a standalone story, though. <laughs> yeah, but all these, these acts of evil annual are like one shot, so. I know. It fits the theme. <laughs> And then I love what was I think my favorite line was I learned this trick from watching Black Widow on YouTube. How 2019 can you get? <laughs> Makes sense. But yeah, I mean, I've been I was I've been pleasantly surprised with most of these uh, acts of evil issues, the annual. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's just gonna be some you know gimmick this you know sell extra books, but no, I've been enjoying most of these. But it was it was it was Ghost Spider. It was Gwen. I was gonna get it regardless. Oh, I know you're going to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is, it's kind of weird because, like, yeah, she's one of the few who who are getting the annual in this who like already has an ongoing series. Because, like, yeah, and, uh, well, next week's Moon Knight, which I think I think there was some planning on Disney's part because Miss Marvel, She Hulk, and Moon Knight are all getting annuals in this thing. So, of course they are. Of course it was planning. They're a meticulous, well-oiled machine. I will give the mouse that, but that that's why I don't like them. They're going to take over the world, and I'm going to be like, I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you. Google's just laying back, letting Disney do all the hard work by buying everything, and then, boom, Google buys Disney, and we got freaking Skynet in two years. One of us. Come be one of us, bro. <laughs> Screw the house of mouse. No. If it ain't old school 90s, if it ain't re- classic Renaissance Disney, I ain't here for it. But, uh, well, uh, but yeah, um, did you read the She-Hulk annual? It was like a week or two ago. Uh, I don't think I got around to oh, it's it. It's pretty good. I mean, it's like her versus Bullseye. 
Oh, you know what? I started it, but it did not finish. Okay, it. yeah, that's another good uh, female centric book there. I like that they chose She Hulk, but I know she's not going to be green in the TV show unless she gets angry. Do you think they're going to do CGI or are they going to do like a uh, Lou Ferrigno thing? I think for poops and giggles, they should do the Lou Ferrigno thing. <laughs> But I, I think actually it would, I don't know, I mean, besides, like, there's the makeup artist aspect of it, and, you know, being in, you know, body paint and stuff, and health reasons, and then there's the CGI cost of it all. So, I don't know. It's a tough call. Yeah. They both have their merits and their, you know, their cons, so. I guess, yeah. I guess it all depends, because somehow you're going to have to do that whole size size changing thing, so. I mean, to me, the most obvious thing would have to been to do like Black Widow. Yeah, but Black Widow. That's just. Me. Are they saving that for movies though? Everybody thinks Black Widow's going to do good, but it's not. <laughs> well, maybe that's a the thing. There, it's just like you know, is there enough material? Well, I'm, I'm saying where you have the legitimate reason to recast. Uh, okay. Okay. Just saying. Maybe they think there's more material for a She-Hulk than a Black Widow, though. Oh, there's well, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just down for She-Hulk. Just know I'm down for She-Hulk. I just found it an interesting choice. And Miss Marvel, and I just hope that they actually give. The only thing I'm really like concerned about is, is if they actually pay credit to their religion because that's really a huge part of their identity. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, then it's gonna be weird. <laughs> what? That's the only thing I'm really worried about. That's the other thing I like that they're actually doing a Disney Plus series is that way, you know, you do have more room than like in a two or three hour movie. For, uh, yeah. So hopefully. Oh, Amazing Spider-Man going big number one. Oh, yeah. Did you pick that up? Yes, I did. That's, that was the last one I was going to do. It's, it's really weird. I wanted to like it because it's Jerry Conway. Well, you know, Eric Larson artwork and everything. But you did it. But at a $5 book, I was just like, yeah, I mean, I something just didn't. Because it's like three short stories, and it's like you really, it's just like there's really no continuity involved except for like in that first story, because it's like you know it's a villain that showed up in Mark Wade's Daredevil a few years ago. And that poor Larson, oh, you know, be compared to uh, Bagley in the same issue is just like ouch. Every, yeah, you know, you're not alone in saying that Bagley's your favorite. I saw a lot of people giving him crap for that. So but I mean, I still. But I do, I do like Eric Larson's stuff on Spider Man too, because I, I did read that. I was still, I was reading at that time too, and yeah, I mean, they're different, but I mean, I have no problem with Larson. Bart, it's definitely a nineties vibe, though. That's all the way what they were shooting for. They were definitely trying to drum up some nostalgic uh, love. So you know, but I again, think yeah, and again, it's like if you want, well, oh, yeah, look at the first story. Who you know, who's Spider Man searching for? You know. MJ's cousin Christy. They're definitely so nineties vibes. But here's the thing. You want to do nineties vibes? Well let's get this marriage back. Dude, every time I see Philip on like like a Facebook article, bring back the marriage. Yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> it was a little it's like I feel personally attacked, but I agree. <laughs> and little little health is all like you're supposed to put as the co-host of Ultimate Spider Cast. I declare we want the we want the marriage back. Email. Damn it! Damn it! Well, it's like promote. I don't care what you say online. Just promote. Hashtag fight me, nerd. I don't know. Hashtag I love Ben Riley. Hashtag scroll down. Hashtag it's something Charlie S would like. And then Charlie shows up and derails the whole the whole article with the crazy theory about Ant Man. Well I told him he should read this issue because in the Larson story it's his favorite nightshade. Oh yeah. Which, you know, it was an interesting choice. Felt a little out of character, but whatever, I'll let it slide. It's it's been a while since we've had to deal with nightshade. <laughs> And yeah, because Charlie's like, is this ha- you know, is this in current continuity? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, they haven't mentioned anything no, that happened. Not- he says there's continuity, but I don't believe him. Well, I'm like, I, I, don't- like I know, but I'm just like, I you don't know when this takes place because it, you know they don't mention anything that happened in the Nighthawk series, and you know Pete and Mary Jane are on a date, so vague. 
story story plot is vague. <laughs> so so Lilith, when are you gonna uh, debut your nightshade cosplay? Uh, quarter past never. <laughs> I think I'll keep it simple and just do a Taya Al Ghul <laughs> cosplay. I don't know how I'm going to keep my boobs in once I figure that out. Talia Al Ghul, <laughs> Catwoman, Black Widow. Uh, oh, I'll just put, oh, when I want to change into Catwoman, I'll just get zippers for the armpits. There you go. <laughs> <sighs> what is up with those armpit holes? <laughs> hey, man, everybody's got a fetish. Some people get to push their fetishes on other people. Okay, I guess. Ah, uh, if only we were more famous. Anyway, uh, okay. So you said so you weren't that thrilled with this issue then, or no? Like I, I don't know. Like I was expecting a little, more, like a through line. Like they, the three stories were just a little too random for me. I guess. Yeah, it's like they just took like three backup stories and just like threw them all in like one issue. I was like, I mean, you can say this for an annual. Like this had to be like a spot. Like I don't. I, I basically don't get why they did it. Did it is. Well, like you said, were they testing the waters for '90s nostalgia? Because yeah, I mean, it's ba- Bagley and Larson, and uh, again, we you know <laughs> we get mention of Mary Jane's cousin, and yes, very '90s. Yeah, so that, that's the only that's the only reason that just kind of threw me. Like, I enjoyed the stories; the artwork was, was good, but like, why does this exist? <laughs> why did I just spend five dollars on this? It is this. Do they test the waters every so often, or is it just a pure cash grab? I feel like this is a pure cash gra- cash grab, because honestly, I feel like no matter what they put out Spider-Man related, there's a fan that's going to pick it up regardless. Yeah, yeah. So, is there, like, I'm trying to big anniversary. Like, I just literally, that's the only thing that irks me about this book. Why does this exist? Well, if yeah. you know, please feel free to, to contact us. Because it just seems like it, this stuff's been happening more and more lately. I mean, I enjoyed them both, but this came out this week, and then uh, that Spider-Man self-improvement came out a few weeks ago. Yeah. I don't know, so I'm just like, are they te- are they testing something, or are they just like, hey, we got... Oh, up. I do want to remind you guys that Spider-Gwen, Ghost Spider Volume 2, Impossible Year trade is out, so if you haven't been reading and you want to get caught up, perfect way to. Just throw that out there. Seriously, like I used to hate trades, but now, like on some stuff, I'm like, oh, I'll just wait for the trade. <laughs> I ain't got time to be waiting month to month for this crap no more. <laughs> no, like I forget about stuff now. I'm just like, oh, there's that, still, that they're still making that. There's so much. That's sort of the the thing. A lot, especially. Um, now that I'm more like into the, the indie comics, like Valiant and Vault and, uh, you know, Image and Boom, there's just like so many comic books. Oh, yeah. But yeah. All right. So are we done here? I believe so, sir. All right. So I was going to say, send your thoughts on the current Spider-Man books, but also remember next episode. We're going to be talking Craven's Last Hunt and Soul of the Hunter with the writer of those stories, Mr. Jan DeMathis. So send your questions. You can get the writer himself to answer them. So email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash ultimate spider cast. And also join the Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash ultimate spider cast uh, at ULT spider cast on Twitter. Follow us uh, on Instagram at CL Sidekicks. All right. And go check out work in progress. <laughs> Capesandlunatics.org. Nice and healthy. No eating disorder there. Uh, so <laughs> subscribe to the Capes and Lunatics YouTube channel and our weekly newsletter at capesandlunatics.home.blog. Call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And you can watch everything we do live on the Capes and Lunatics Facebook, Twitter, and at getvocal.com slash channel slash capes. All right. Go Spider. Where can everyone get a hold of you? <laughs> if you guys want to hang out with me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. And just for my sidekicks and my Capes and Lunatics peeps, you can find me over on Instagram at Lil Hellfire 69. You know I had to do it. <laughs> Duh, she had to do it. <laughs> All right. So, thank you for joining us for our 
State of the Spider address, everyone. Again, join us next episode. Jam the math if send your questions. I'll figure it out. But send your questions. Give me a big one. And swing on back. Blip.